Hello, Stoned Apes and others who are curious about the healing powers of psychedelic medicines. Welcome to the Stoned Ape Reports. I'm your host, Stuart Preston. Each episode, I talk to another Stoned Ape, somebody who has experienced the transformational powers of psychedelics, or with a practitioner who works with these medicines. In this episode, I had the pleasure of speaking with Daniel. He shared his experiences in healing from alcoholism and deep depression with LSD and other entheogens. Please enjoy this episode with Daniel. Daniel, thank you so much for, for joining me here on the Stone Day Reports. I appreciate your time, and, and you and I had a conversation prior to this, so I know a little bit of your, your background and what you've been through. But why don't you fill us in on kind of what your story is, what, the, what you were dealing with in life and, and how you came to psychedelics and entheogens and, and how they helped. Yes. Well, let, let me back up just a bit and, and tell you a bit sure. about myself. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm 45 years old. I have uh, three children. I found entheogens approximately 15 years ago. I was in a very different place in life at that time. Um, if you would have met me then, you wouldn't have recognized me. I was a full, full-on alcoholic. I was mm. depressed for four years. I had been out of work for God knows how long. And uh, at that time, I was 31 years old and living with my grandmother. So mm. there wasn't really much in my life that was going in the right direction. Yeah. And being an alcoholic, I blamed everyone but myself for that. Uh, right it was never my fault. It was the system or, or the people that should have employed me or it was just everyone else. Yeah. So that's autumn, autumn of 2005. I started smoking pot also. And that was a, a bit of a relief from just being stone drunk all the time. Mm -hmm. Then one, one day I was, uh, I was at my dealer's house and, uh, and he said, you know, my friend, he bought way too much acid. Would you like some? <laughs> and I had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. I did not know what LSD <laughs> was. Um, right. He, he could have offered me heroin, amphetamines, anything. I would have said yes to anything because I, right. was, I was trying to escape life. I did not want to exist. I was just trying to not be here. Yeah. So I would honestly have taken anything that you didn't have to use a needle. I would have taken it. And he happened to say, would you like some LSD? And I said, yeah, sure. I'll have some LSD. Right. Uh, thinking that it was kind of like being chemically drunk. Now, that's what right. I was expecting. That weekend, me and my friends, we went out to a, a cabin and we had tons of liquor along. We were just going to spice it up with a little LSD. Right. We, we took the LSD and I think it was about two hours into the, the trip. I'd had about half a beer by then because I just couldn't right. drink anymore. Um, and I didn't have the word for it then. I did not have the word chakra at that moment in time. But what mm. happened was that my throat chakra just opened up wide. And from the base of my neck, there was like this energy beam that just went straight out into the universe and just connected me to everything. And from that place, I could... I could go up this energy stream, this energy beam. So I did. Yeah. Just a few meters. I wasn't flying around in the universe. I just went up a few meters so that I could see myself from outside. And when I saw myself from outside, I saw that everything in my life that I was hurting, all, all the hurt, all the misery, all the anger, all the pain, all the... Everything, everything was my own making. Mm. I had created this for myself. 
No one else had created it for me. I had created it. My choices had put me in this position. And when I saw that so clearly, I understood that if I can create all this, if I can create all this misery for myself, I can create the opposite also. Hmm. And that's when I chose to do exactly that. I chose to create the opposite. I chose to, to invite love and, and happiness and balance and, and just exploration and, and, uh, and what have you into my life. And in that moment, my alcoholism, it just disappeared. It just went, it was like hitting a button. It just was no more. Just and, like that. And looking back, yes, just like that. I, I have never had the urge. I've never had the interest. Because what, what alcohol did for me was disconnecting me from everything. It was yeah. me not wanting to take responsibility for my life. But in that moment, I wanted nothing less than taking responsibility for my life. That's all I wanted. I wanted to take responsibility so I could create another life. So there was no room for alcohol anymore at all. Um, I did, I did uh, it was a few years later, two or three years down the road, it was a beautiful summer day and, and I thought, I haven't had anything to drink for quite a while now. A cold beer should be very nice today. Mm -hmm. And I, I bought a beer and I took one sip of it and my entire body, it just, it just screamed. It went, no, no, what are you doing? Why are you poisoning me? Stop it, stop it. Wow. And I, ju I just had to put the beer away and walk away uh, because it would not it would not allow me. So I, I woke up from my alcoholism. I, I had been a drunk for close to 15 years by then. And yeah. I was the kind that, that uh, bought gallons of moonshine and just mm. drank until there was nothing else to drink. Or until I passed out. Um, yeah. So it it just ended within within a time space of fifteen twenty minutes. I of course That's amazing. I, I, went, I I was absolutely flabbergasted. So I I got him on the yeah. internet a few days later, and what is this LSD that I got? What is this? And, uh, and of course, I found out it's been used for, for curing alcoholism. No shit. Um, <laughs> so that was my alcoholism. It, it was gone yeah. within 15, 20 minutes. But I was still deeply depressed. And I needed to continue medicating with LSD for two or three months every weekend pretty much well wow. uh, because because it when i took a trip it got me into another mindset i got to to see things from another perspective um, but after a few days of being in the same environment of being around the same kind of people and so on i started to slip back into my old ways of thinking and it is that way if, if you've thought a negative thought about yourself or, or whatever for a long enough time it's become like a super highway in your mind um, and and just because you get a new perspective doesn't mean that you can actually hold that perspective you need to work on that perspective until it kind of overtakes that highway that you've already got programmed yeah. So for about three months, I, I worked on that. Um, I remember after the first or second trip, uh, I, I had a very powerful experience while sober. 
I was walking down the road and I noticed the leaves on the trees. And of course, intellectually, I understood that leaves were on trees. Right. But when I saw them, I realized that I, I hadn't seen leaves for mm -hmm. five years. I hadn't seen leaves. Wow. For me, trees had been just sticks with some kind of green blur on the top. <laughs> I had not seen leaves for many years. Oh. And all of a yeah. sudden, I saw leaves. And it was, it was the most amazing experience to see leaves. Um, yeah. And, and I, what, I need, what I did, um, all of this, it just sparked this, this massive interest for personal and spiritual development for me. I didn't really have a spiritual part of it at the time, the personal development. Not in a way where yeah. I, I went around looking for what other people had, had talked about, uh, but rather in a keen interest in how do I work? What, what is going on with me? What, what is all this? Yeah. Um, not, not reading books or anything, just investigating myself. Uh, when it came to the depression, I, I, I remember I'd been in India for, I, I'd been in India a few years back. And I spoke to an English, uh, to an Indian uh, doctor. And he said, well, it's no, it's no, um, oh, oh. it's not strange that you're all depressed up there because you all walk around uh, in black clothes. And at that time, I, I just dismissed him and said, that's, that's absolutely silly. Why would you even yeah. say something like that? But now when I came out of a depression and I looked down at my clothes, I was all black huh. and I thought what it, what happens if I start changing the way I dress what, yeah. what impact will that have on my mental health so I started with my socks I started by, by just going out buying the absolute most ridiculous socks that I could find with little pigs on and, and just, just <laughs> crazy socks. Because when you put your feet up on the couch and you look down at some absolutely silly socks, it's hard not to just smile a little. And I did that for all yeah. of my clothes. I changed all my clothes I, to color and just, I must have been looking like a clown at, at one point. Um, but it really did have a deep impact on how I felt about myself. Yeah. And, and, and of course I was working with LSD during the time. So a lot of this interest in what happens if I do this, what happens if I do that? A lot of those suggestions came to me during these LSD trips. Um, to take another, another thing that's really had a deep impact is music. Mm. I, I used to love listening to really angry music. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, like um, punk, hip hop, uh, music where, where the text has a meaning, but it's, uh, it's often quite angry. Right. And if you go through life and you have that in your ears, if you have messages of I want to die in your ears or I hate everyone, it's easy to, to meet people with a frown. Right. Um, and what I did just to, to see what, what happens if I do this, I, I, um, I pumped my, my mobile phone with with just Disney songs, Hakuna Matata and uh, Bare Necessities and, and things like that. And, and other yeah. silly songs and other happy songs and, and so on. And, and I started just reprogramming myself because this is what we're doing when we're, we're listening to music. We're programming 
a certain vibration, a certain feeling, a certain attitude towards life. And yeah. when I started listening to all these other songs, I smiled at the cashier as I was buying something. If I was listening to punk music, I wouldn't smile at the cashier. I'd, I'd be frowning and just giving over money and yeah. getting out of there. But all of a sudden, I, I started meeting people with a smile instead of this frown on my face. And uh, it just went on like that. I reprogrammed myself fully by, yeah. by just looking at my life. What, what am I programming myself with? Uh, like I said, clothes, music, relationships, um, news, films, anything. What am I putting into my life and what is the effect it's having on my mental health? Yeah. And it took me three months of reprogramming and tripping pretty much every weekend on, on LSD. And I was cured. So, yeah, and listening to you, it's hard to imagine, just listening to the tone of your voice and the things you're talking about, it's hard to imagine who you were back then. I wouldn't recognize myself. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. Um, I, I get quite Part of transformation when I think about that person, but I'm, I'm also very yeah. happy because, uh, well, um, addiction and so on. I mean, it is rocket fuel for personal growth. If you're willing to face it and, and, uh, and take it on, take a challenge on, it is rocket right. fuel. So, what should, well, where should I go next? I did that for four years. Four years, I was just 100% focused on my own um, healing and my own growth. Right. And it took, it took four years to root it all out and, and reprogram myself. Well, you had three then, months where you, were, you took LSD every weekend. Did you continue yes. to do psychedelic trips for those four years? Yes, absolutely. Um, okay. Not as frequent. I mean, there in the beginning, it was, there, it was pure medicine. The, right. I, I didn't really have the vocabulary for it, but I mean, my intention even if I wasn't thinking along those lines, it was purely therapeutic. I wanted mm -hmm. to heal. I knew that I needed this to heal. It was my medicine. So I did it over and over again to be able to, to reprogram myself. After that, it kind of, it got perhaps once a month, once every two months. It, it's declined a bit. And it also became more fun. It became something to explore with friends, something to go to, to raves and so on. Uh, more inviting fun into my life than deep diving within myself. Although that was also the case at the same time. But for four years, I was, I was just working with taking care of myself. And then all of a sudden, one winter, that energy just shifted. So during those four years, all the energy had just gone into me, inwards. Yeah. I was on my healing journey, so to say. And then all of mm -hmm. a sudden, it just shifted, and the energy was starting going outward. And I, I wasn't really looking for anyone, but people started coming to me for, for guidance and, and suggestions and help and, and so on. So for the past 15 years now, that's been my life purpose. It's been personal and spiritual development, uh, mainly with myself, but also together with others. And one of my main allies, uh, or my two main allies have been LSD and mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And so now you're, you, you had all this internal work. It's ironic because you went the other way around. Most people that I talk to say, yeah, back when I was younger, I ate some mushrooms or took some LSD at a party and, and I had no idea. And then I realized the, the power of it later in life. And you went mm -hmm. through a, a period where you took, took it for this escape or as a drug and it had this big impact on you and you healed four years. And then, then you got to a point that's like, Oh, I can have some fun with this. And you reconnect with other people. And, and now you're, you, now you're helping people. Is that the phase you're in now is you're helping other people? Uh, in one way or another, I, I haven't helped people with entheogens for two years now because I'm writing a book where I'm mm. collecting all my, all my insights and thoughts and, and techniques and so on. Right. Uh, so that's where, where I'm putting my energy at the moment. I take vocational okay. uh, trip by myself for my own purposes, but I haven't right. been doing it together with other people as a guide for the past two years. Um, okay. Yes. So and you mentioned see that, what uh, happens after the book is, is done, then, then I'll have time for other things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. So you mm. mentioned uh, your, your medicines of choice your LSD and mushrooms. Um, yes. Have you had experience with any others that resulted in, um, some, some similar or analogous uh, transformations or um, improvements or insights? Yes. Um, perhaps I, I can give, uh, give a little bit of perspective on the different, um, different entheogens. Uh, sure. Looking back, I, I really love LSD, of course. But I, right. I also think it's, it's most suitable for mental health issues. When you work with LSD, you don't really have a spirit on the other side working with you. You're left to your own um, abilities. Yeah. When working with the mushroom, now I, I come from a shamanic perspective. When working with the mushroom, you have another entity on the other side. There is mm. someone there. There is someone there that has his own agenda that wants to help you, that wants to guide you, that you can go to for, for help. Yeah. Uh, I, so I mainly use mushrooms for uh, connecting with Mother Earth, for past life um, work, for, for things of that nature. That, right. So, so I think that LSD is... is supremely good at the mental health issues of modern society while mushrooms is really good at the more spiritual aspects uh, and also working hmm. to relieve the parasitic energies and things like that yeah i've also i've also uh, had the, the privilege of um of working with shamans that work with uh, ayahuasca and with San Pedro. Hmm. And I'm a, I'm a very good friend of ayahuasca and San Pedro. I, we come along, good. we get along very well. And I feel Excellent. that they, they kind of interconnect with the mushroom. Um, hmm. But it, uh, it's also my feeling that I live here where I live for a reason. And the things that grow here, they grow here for a reason. Hmm. Now, I love ayahuasca, but I have a mushroom growing outside my window here. Why <laughs> would I be chasing halfway across the world when right. the mushroom is calling me? outside my window yeah and so so i have absolutely nothing ill to say about ayahuasca or san pedro they are fantastic teachers and, and good friends of mine but they're they're not they're not they're not made for sweden they're right. made for helping swedes of course they're made for right. helping us all 
as is a mushroom and as is, is LSD, but the mushroom is here for a reason. It's here for me to work with it, for us to work with it. It has messages for us. Um, so I prefer the mushroom, the wild Swedish mushroom, the Liberty Cap, uh, to Ayahuasca and, and San Pedro, only for that reason, not for any any effects or uh, differences in effects and so on. Yeah. Uh, for a while, I, I also, I had this thought that could I find some legal alternatives? So I, I worked a while with, um, with seeds containing LSA, uh, Hawaiian, Hawaiian Woodrose, um, what are the other names? A few different hmm. kinds anyway. Right. And I didn't really care for them. They, hmm. I, I don't really know how to put this. Um, I didn't feel that they revealed themselves to me. And that might be just me. That might be that they yeah. didn't like me. It might be, that might be it. But for me, I, I got a sneaky feel from them. Um, like they, they didn't want to reveal themselves. Like they were kind of always trying to be in my periphery so I couldn't really see them. Kind of a voodoo feeling I got from it. And mm. so I, I didn't really care for them. Um, while working with ayahuasca, San Pedro, and mushrooms, they will come up to me and just introduce themselves and tell them exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it and what they're finding and, and telling yeah. me off. And, and <laughs> they will be very right. direct and, and, um, and so in their communication. While these LSA seeds, I got some fantastic effects of them and I, I did do some... Um, trial trips with clients but I had to start thinking well well why am I doing this well because it's legal should I use something that is inferior because it's legal to something mm. that is superior because it's illegal and right I just I can't really I can't really um, justify doing that yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Um mm. so you've had you've had two um very significant changes, the alcoholism and the depression. Have you noticed um other than your your socks and reconnecting with nature, um are there any other lessons that you've learned or challenges that you've overcome, you know, as a result of essentially putting your life on this whole new path? Tons. Tons. Absolutely. Well, tons. Yes, I've I've had. <coughs> Where should I start? There have been so many challenges, big ones and small ones. So many insights. Yeah. My very 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 first challenge on LSD. It was. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Mm. As an alcoholic, as an addict, I was lying about everything. I was lying yeah. to everyone about everything, about what I was doing, about what I, who I was. I was just full of lies. And my very first challenge was be truthful tell the truth yeah so the very, very first thing i had to do was was just be brutally honest to everyone around me what was happening so as i mentioned i was living at my grandmother's place and she was pretty much the first one that got to know what i was doing that i was healing myself with lsd and so, so that was one very important challenge right at the start of it all. 
to stop yeah. the truth. Yeah, and so you talked to her about it. Yes, yes. At first, she was um, she was kind of yeah, that sounds good. Really? Because of course she she saw that I was drinking. Well, she had no idea what LSD was. She she was like seventy, eighty years old. She had absolutely no idea. So she just went, <laughs> okay. So you, you've healed from your alcoholism. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Then she went to the library, and uh, <laughs> and read up on LSD, and she came back and she was so worried for me. She. She's she yeah. had taken some prints of, from some books and it, it said that LSD, also called the drug of death. Um, uh. I've never heard anyone call LSD the drug of death. But if, if one is to connect death with LSD, I mean, it, it would be some kind of ego death or, or death yeah. of uh, illusions or, or something like that. And it would be in a very positive sense of the word. But she was so worried. Don't you see, Daniel? Don't you see? This is a drug of death that you're doing. You're going to mm. die. And another relative of mine said, you know, it begins with LSD and it ends with heroin. Uh. And, and for me, that was... Nothing could be further from the truth. Because when I was right. drinking... I would have taken anything to escape. And if someone would have offered me heroin, I would have taken it. Right. And I'm looking back, I am happy because there was actually heroin in the town that I was in among some of my friends. But I was never at the right place at the right time. So I never got mm. offered to, to smoke heroin with them. If I would have been right. when I was drunk, I would have done it because I just wanted to escape. Having done LSD, yeah. it was absolutely unthinkable that I would do heroin. Why would I want to disconnect? All I wanted to do was take charge of my life and create happiness and, and, and healing and growth for myself. Why on earth would I want to take heroin? heroin? It yeah. just did not make sense. And, and that person still doesn't understand me yeah it came to a point where i just okay it doesn't really matter what i say because the the only thing they hear is i'm doing illegal drugs um so i'll have to show them instead right so i did I, that's what i i set out to do i i said well let me show them what it is to not be a drunk anymore but I just can't reach them. And that's what yeah. truth will do for you. It will sort out people and, uh, and polarize in some cases, unfortunately. But yeah, those you can't get through to. to myself. Yeah. Um, I thought I, I might mention uh, the, four, the four stages which I, um, I ended up working with. Um, yeah. Having done this for a while, I I kind of landed in a four-step process for personal spiritual development, and it's quite simple, and I'm quite proud of it. So I thought I I might share it with you. Um, so the the of course there are many programs that that uh, teach personal spiritual right. development. Um, but I think I've found one that I haven't really found anything missing in it. The first thing that you need to do to change is to become aware. So the first stage is awareness. You need to become aware that you have a problem. Otherwise, yeah. you can't do anything about the problem. The second stage is you need to accept that you have a problem. Now, for some people, stage one and two, they might just go hand in hand and, and be very easy to, to speed through. But some yeah. people, when they realize that they have a problem, they do not want to know it. They do not they want to accept, accept it. it. They, so deny it. They, will, they will do anything they can to forget about it. 
and then yeah. it falls out of awareness. The third step is change. Do, when, when we've done the first two steps, when we've become aware that we have a problem, when we've accepted that we do have that problem, then we are in a mindset where we invite change, where we're open to change. And when we're open to change, change seems to come and, and find us. It's a person that puts us on the right track or, or something that inspires oh. us or, or something that, uh, that shows us another door, another opportunity, something that pulls us in a direction or challenges us to, to make a change in one way or another or in a dozen different ways at the same time, we get yeah. the possibility to make that change and to make that happen. And the fourth step is to be grateful. When yeah. we have become aware that we have a problem and when we have accepted that and when we have made the change, we will eventually arrive at a point when all that is left is the memory of the challenge we had. All that is left is the insight that is left from it. Not all yeah. the hurt, not all the pain, and not all the struggle, but the possibility to be grateful for what we have learned. And, yeah, and that's, that's where good. I am with, with, uh, with alcohol. I mean, I can look back and be sickened by what I did to myself and, and the harm that I did to myself and to others also for that matter. But when I, when I go deeper into it, I'm just so very grateful for having had that experience. Um, mm. Because it's, it's, it forced me to change. Yeah. It forced me to take a long, hard look at myself and to change who and what I am. Yeah. I thought I'd give you that four point. <laughs> four yeah. Point, uh, is that, uh, is that part of your book? Yes. Awesome. And when, uh, when do you expect your book to be, to be done and, and, and hit the shelves? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no Good. idea if it's going to hit the shelves, to be quite yeah. honest. Um, I try not to, to look too far ahead. And, and this book isn't really for everyone else. It is for myself. I no. am collecting my thoughts and my ideas on how to work through trauma, alcoholism, depression, uh, exhaustion, but also on how to work with the spirit world, how to work with entheogens, and, and pretty much everything that I have found during this 15 year rampage through life. <laughs> um, yeah. So it is me collecting my thoughts. And if anyone else can, uh, can be helped by it, I'm, I'm very happy to share it. Um, I will be sharing it for free on the internet. And right. maybe, maybe I'll make a book available, a print, um, or maybe not. At the moment, I'm writing right. it in Swedish, but I will be mm. translating it to English as soon as it's done. Okay. At the moment, I, I think I've got perhaps one third or one fourth left to write before I, I go into a final editing stage of it. Nice. Hmm. Nice, and I like the I like those four those four steps. I can see how entheogens line right up, you know, with mm -hmm. that, and can can help help you know along that path. So, um, well, Daniel, thank you so much for sharing all this. That's that's a lot of powerful stuff you shared with us today. Do you have anything else you'd like to to get out there? Um. Yes, if I could say say a few more things about that four four point process and also yeah. a few words about integration. Yeah, do it. Um, just to go back to that four point process, for many taking an entheogen, they don't really know what's wrong. 
they they sense that something is wrong, but they do not know what. And there, right. the entheogens, they help us to get to that first point, become aware, raising the awareness. And um, it could be that you, you've suffered childhood trauma or, or that you're being a horrible father or, or whatever, but you're not, you're not aware about it. For others, they are aware, but they haven't accepted it. And then mm-hmm. the mushroom or the ayahuasca or whatever, it may help us to accept it. Okay. Yeah. I see myself and I accept myself because it dismantles our protective barriers, our mental barriers that we put up to, to, not, uh, to not see these things in ourselves. But now we see ourselves and we accept it. For yeah. others, the entheogen might help us in, on the third point to make a change. They know that they have a problem and they accept that they have a problem, but they have absolutely no idea what to do about it. Yeah. Then Mother Ayahuasca or the Mushroom, San Pedro, will come along and tell you exactly what to do. This is what you need to do. You need to stop being horrible to your children. You need to go out into nature every day. You need to quit that job. You need to quit this relationship. You need to step it up. It will tell you exactly what to do. And therefore, mm. you, you will have the keys to change. Right. So I, I just wanted to fill that in, how, how it will connect to, to the entheogens. Yeah. Um, I wanted to touch on integration also. Yeah, please. That is something that is more discussed more and more nowadays. And it's it is, also yeah. the part that I think is um, most overlooked. And we often yeah, make I agree. a good deal about it when we talk about it. Um, how should I say this? What is integration? Integration is, simply put, is just taking the insights that you have gained during your experience and putting it to work in your life. That is all it is. Taking the insights and putting it to work. Now, how you do that, you might be journaling, you might be doing meditations, you might be, be doing affirmations, whatever it doesn't really matter. Take the insight and put it to work. That is all integration is. And this is where people are stumbling around and, and they're, they're going into, oh, should I use this tool or that tool and, or should I do it in this way? Just do it. Just do it. You, you know what you need to do. Do it. And this is where, where we all need some help also, of course, because we lose our way and we forget what we were doing and so on. Yeah. Yeah, that's Sometimes an important Sometimes people, people have asked, how long is the trip? How long is this trip? And they usually mean, how, for how long am I going to be falling around the woods in this manner? Um, right. And, and I say, well, the trip... It, could be six hours or 12 hours, but that's, that isn't actually the trip. That is just us stumbling around the woods. That's just us having a good time out here or crying or whatever we're doing. That is not the trip. The trip is when you take all those insights and put it to work in life. And if you do that, then you are on a trip as long as you're working with that insight. Yeah. That is the trip. That is the actual journey. The journey isn't taking five grams of mushrooms and stumbling around the, around the woods. That is all good fun and, or, or dreadful, whatever it is. It is. But the journey is taking the insights, the epiphanies that you had during that experience and putting it to work. That yeah. is the journey. That is the trip. 
And when yeah, you stop that's doing a great that, point. that is when the trip ends. Yeah, so I just well, the trip to say never that ends. It's just the beginning yeah, of a journey. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. Well, that that is wonderful, Daniel. Yes. That, that that is a great a great point to end on. I I am uh, super grateful for you to come on and share such a, a powerful story and and to leave us with such a, a great lesson that the the trip doesn't end; it's just the beginning. So, thank mm-hmm. you so much for coming here on the podcast. I really appreciate it. That concludes this edition of the Stoned Ape Reports. Thank you for listening. Please follow us on Instagram at Stoned Ape Comedy and subscribe to our newsletter at www.stonedapecomedy.com. Again, thanks for listening and catch you next time, Stoned Apes.